Good afternoon. Everybody hot enough? Okay, very, very good. Thank, it's a great privilege to be here, particularly because it's Stockholm. This is like my second home. I was a, I'll come to that in a little bit. I was a, an exchange student here many years ago, but I feel very privileged to be in this position and want to thank you guys for the, for the honor of being here amongst this incredibly distinguished group of speakers. It's, it's really, really a great privilege to do that. But I want to talk about this, the teabag effect. Why a teabag of all things? Because if you look at tea, tea is... Relatively simple things. You take water, which is clear, and you add to it a bunch of dried leaves. And you take those dried leaves and it changes the entire color of the water. That to me is what an organization that wants peak performance is about. You choose the right leaves. You make it the right color. So my name is Gopal Rajguru, and, and, and you know, f for me, I've been concerned about peak performance for a long time. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about my journey and how I got here to do this. What does T have to do with peak performance? Actually, quite a lot. Now, first of all, you would guess with a name like Gopal Rajguru, I would, of course, be Swiss. <laughs> this is what Swiss people look like. Make no mistake about it. Raymond, I, you know, I'll let him get away with it. But it didn't start. It didn't start here. It started here. Okay, so it started in India, which is where the name came from. But my parents were ambitious people. They wanted to find new opportunity. So they set out for new adventures. And they set out for that new adventure here. Now, I grew up in a place called Seattle, in the northwest corner of the US. And it was a wonderful place to grow up in a very interesting time. Now, I was happy being an American. But I wanted to see the rest of the world. I was very curious to see what else was out there. And I wanted to go and experience the rest of it. So I signed up to be an exchange student in France. And I thought, this is what I was dreaming of. Instead, I got a little detour and I ended up here. So this is why Stockholm is my second home, is because this is where I was the exchange student. And it gave me a taste for Europe that I simply could not give up. And so, 10 years later, I came back. This time I came back to the Netherlands. I set up a company here. The, it's a company called Walker, Richer & Quinn. It's the international arm of an American software company. And it was fantastic because it gave me a chance to see a lot of the world. And in seeing a lot of the world, I got to build a fantastic team of people. And I mean a really amazing team of people. These are the people that made that, that whole thing great. Now, in the process of doing that, however, I got a chance to make every single mistake in the book. So this is my learning, if you will, was actually going through this process and doing it wrong and having the kindness of my team come back and say, you did that wrong. You really should have done it the other way. Well, that's good. That, it creates this, this feeling of trust. And to me, trust is really important because that's part of the education process through which I went. What I realized, it's, like, it's a bit like uh, what um, Howard Schultz, the, uh, the, uh, the former chairman of Starbucks, once said. He, he said, Starbucks is the third place. Well, what are the first two? The first one is home. And the second one is work. It's where you go. You belong to the place where you work. Your, the, your co-workers you have aren't just chief marketing officer and production director and all of that. These are your colleagues. These are your friends. These are your family. And being part of that family, that's what makes it tea. So how do you make tea? Well, as you know, the ingredients are simple. The first ingredient is boiling water. But even then, if you go to some restaurant, you get tepid water that's been run through a coffee machine, so it gets to taste and smell like coffee instead of tea. But then you get the right tea. And if you get that combination right, then you can really enjoy it. And that's the goal. So that's what, to me, peak performance is about. It's about having the right mix of things in an organization. And what Raymond said is right, actually. A good management model is important. But at the heart of any management model, our leaders, our people. And if those people don't believe in that management model, the, mo the model can be fantastic, but it won't be executed. So it needs to have that, that combination of trust and belief. And so this is what I, what, I, what I think real performance is about. It's mindset. And what I'd like to do is to think about all of the different things that create performance. Here are some of them. It's energy, it's passion. 
It's perseverance, it's dedication, it's grit, it's discipline, it's hard work, it's all of those things. In fact, it could be even this, the right goals. In fact, one of the speakers from next year's forum said, uh, said this very nicely. He said the destination is more important than the route to reaching it. Because each one of us defines a slightly different route to get from A to B, but as long as we get to B and deliver on the performance we want, then it makes some sense. But to me, there's one thing that's actually more important, and this is what I had the tremendous privilege to experience in the organizations that I helped to build, and it's this. It's joy. It's joy. People loving what they do. In fact, don't take my word for it, take Oprah's. She said, joy is a sustained sense of well-being and internal peace, a connection to what matters to you. And if you can make that connection to your organization, people will do extraordinary things. And it's fantastic to watch. It's absolutely amazing when you, when you see this. So this phrase, as tired as it is, is actually at the heart of it. Do what you love and love what you do. And if you don't, you owe it to yourself to make a change. So I'd like to get inside your heads a little bit. I'd like to ask you a question. And in fact, I'm going to ask you two questions. So you're thinking, who, who me? Yes, you. OK, so the two questions I'd like to ask you, one has to do with obligation. The second one has to do with desire. So the first one regarding obligation is this. What is the level of performance that you must deliver at work in order to earn the salary that you're paid? Okay, I want you to choose. Okay, so think of it for yourself. Choose ex excellent, acceptable, or unacceptable. Second one. What is the level of performance you want to deliver at work? Okay, let me go back for a second. What is the level of performance you must deliver? How many of you chose unacceptable? Okay, unfortunately that is, yes, very good, okay. How many of you chose acceptable? Very good. How many of you chose excellent? All right, very good. So why do you think acceptable is the right answer? Because that's what goes in the job description, that's what you're paid for. This is the job description, and when you deliver that, I mean, if, 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 you, if you go to the HR department and say, you know, I'd like to fire this employee because they are delivering acceptable work. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of okay, isn't it? I mean, uh, it's acceptable. You told me it's acceptable. So that is what it is. Now, let's go to the second question. This is a desire one. What is the level of, ex of performance you want to deliver at work? How many of you thought of excellent? Okay, well that's, that's interesting. Because I have done this, I've asked this question through the course of my work, I've asked it to more than 20,000 people in nine different organizations with which I've worked. And at every level, from shop floor to top executives, and what comes out in every single one of those questionnaires is that. 90% of people want to deliver excellence. So you've got to ask yourself, why? That doesn't make sense. I'm paid to do this and I'm delivering this. Why? It doesn't make any sense. Now, think about your reasoning, okay? When you thought about that, that term, excellent, what did it mean to you? Why did you want to do it? How many of you were thinking, I want to earn more money. I want to get a bonus. I want to get a promotion. How many of you said, it's the way I am? It's the way I think. It's about me. I, I couldn't think of delivering anything less than excellence because it's just who I am. And that's it. That is exactly it. This is why people do this. They do it because it's for them. It reflects on the way they actually perform. And the reason they do it is attention. We get attention as we're growing up. As children, we get attention from our parents. They tell us, wow, what a beautiful painting. They tell us, wow, you can do this on the gym. You, wow, you've done this. You've learned to ride a bike. You get, you get feedback at all different levels. But then you go to work after school, because in school, you also get grades and things like that. But then you go to school, then you go to work, 
and people say, I've done excellent work. Yeah, that's what I pay you to do. What are you, what are you waiting for from me? Get back to work. Nobody else is going to do that work. So the, the love that we're looking for, unfortunately, doesn't work. Even top performers need feedback. They need that constant love to tell them, I am doing well, and somebody noticed. So this is what I mean by making tea. What I mean by making tea is how can you harness that desire that people have to do well, get them to put in the effort, no, the extra effort to deliver those exceptional results? Well, the easy way is this. You notice. You notice. That's all it comes down to. You notice. But then, once you notice, you have an obligation. And the obligation you have is very simple. You have to do something. You have to do something. You have to praise them. Well, how do you do it? Well, here are the first three of those secrets. The first three of those secrets is a feedback formula to tell people how well they're doing. And it comes in three pieces. Okay? Piece number one, emotion. Instead of just saying thank you, a very ordinary word that we say, someone opens a door, you say thank you. Someone gives you a cup of coffee, you say thank you. And by the way, don't, don't stop doing that. Your mother was right, you should say thank you. Okay, P please don't stop doing that. Uh, but what I mean is, is this. If someone has done something extraordinary, is an ordinary word, and even if you say it three times, is that enough? No, it isn't. It isn't. So, add an emotion. And I know what, what many of you are thinking, oh my God, emotion, I can't deal with that. Particularly the men. And we're never taught to deal with emotion. But emotion can be something like pride. It can be impression. It can be many, many things. It doesn't have to be the gushy stuff. Two, when you, the performance that they did, so that they know what was good and they have a higher chance of repeating that performance. So this is a way to get your kids, for example, if they've done something good and you praise it appropriately, it gives them the motivation to do it again, so you'll notice and give them the praise again. But we're not finished. Item number three, because. Because is really critical. Tell them why that performance was important. Let me give you an example. Okay, I was really impressed with the project update you presented to the board yesterday because it was clear, concise, and it helped make the decision that you needed about the project funding. So it tells them why. It's very personal. And that is what creates that feeling. Can I have a personal challenge for you? Okay, And the personal challenge is this. Now you got the secret. I want you to use it. I want you to use it one per day. That's my challenge to you. Okay? If you cannot find one excellent performance in your daily routine from the people with whom you interact on a day-to-day -day basis to give that kind of praise to, you're not paying attention. That's really what it comes down to. You're not paying attention. It's all around you. Think of a waiter in a restaurant. They hear immediately when something goes wrong. Do they ever hear when something goes right? Be the exception. Be the teabag. Be the teabag. But what if there is a need for improvement? Some of what they did was good, but they didn't quite measure up. So there was some good, some excellent, in fact, and some that needs improvement. Well, here are the other two secrets. Okay, we're going to add on to that. So first, we start with those three, okay? So we're going to start with those three, and then we're going to add to it. So how do we add to it? Well, I want you to do this. I want you to put your hand out in front of you. This is your mnemonic, okay? So everyone use your hand, all right? And I want you to put it like this in front of you, okay? And we're going to start down here at the bottom. I feel when you because. Oh, look where I'm pointing. I'm pointing forward. Isn't that convenient? This is now I'm going to add to it. And. So no buts here, okay? No buts here. So but the only but in the room is the one you're sitting on. That's it, okay? But and then you make a suggestion. Not an order, but a suggestion. And you tell them how they could potentially improve. Not just, well, I want you to do that better. That's nice, but it's, it's insufficient. Be specific. So tell them exactly what. How do I make it, make it better? And then you're left with this. 
What's this? This is the Witham. What's in it for me? Why should I take your advice and integrate it in my life to change the way I perform? Because there's something in it for me. I feel when you, because. And if you would, then. This is what it looks like. Add something to it. And if you could add two graphs that highlight the growth over last year's numbers, then it'll help them understand more easily why you need the funding for the additional technical staff. It gives them a reason to make the change that they have. And if you do this right, it's a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift to them because it helps them do what 90% of people want to do, which is be excellent. They want to be good. They want that feeling. So my challenge to you is this. Be the teabag. Be the teabag. It's a choice, okay? It means you have to do some extra work. But the life you're going to improve is your own. Because the feedback that you get, the energy, the joy that you get is double what you give. Thank you very much. <laughs>